What up, nerds? Welcome back. Nate in the wild here. Nort in the world. Neat in the wield. Net in the weld? Hey, lots of new people joining the channel the last couple days. I can't thank you all enough for your support. It's been so cool watching the channel grow. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you'd click the button down below. Join the family. Everyone here is super cool, except for Tim. Tim's fine. Whatever. Panoramas. Let's talk about them. You ever find yourself shooting a scene and it just, like, doesn't fit in the frame? You find yourself making sacrifices on your composition. There's something too close to the corner and it's kind of distorted, or you can't hit that juicy rule of thirds line that you've been craving. You can put on a, a wider lens, but then you get all sorts of weird distortion and the edges are kind of curved. Well, I'm here to tell you that we have a solution. You don't have to throw your camera in the ocean and walk away anymore. We can fix it. Panoramas, baby. Turn that camera vertical, take eight to 10 shots left to right, and suddenly you have a photo with an ultra wide perspective without any of the weird distortion. And as a bonus, you got so much resolution, you can buy a billboard in Times Square. Okay, so let's start at the top, actually taking the photos. Stitching photos together to make a panorama is super easy and streamlined nowadays in Adobe Lightroom, but like many subsets of photography, you still have to get it right in camera, otherwise you're just setting yourself up for hours of unnecessary editing. Thankfully, the in-camera work for shooting a panorama is so easy, I shoot mine handheld. I don't even take the time to set up a tripod and level it and everything because nowadays with all the advances in technology, it's actually just that easy. First things first, portrait mode. Now, it might seem like because you're shooting a super wide scene left to right that you just want to take one photo this way and maybe a couple more across. But due to the distortion on the lenses and everything, you're going to find yourself making sacrifices you don't want around the tops and the bottoms. Instead, it's much better to rotate your camera vertically so you can be shooting in portrait mode and take more photos left to right. This gives you more vertical relief and a little extra resolution to play with once you have everything stacked up in Adobe Lightroom. One of the most important things to keep in mind is to shoot outside the frame. You're gonna lose about 20 to 30% of your finished photo when you start cropping and editing everything together. And it's always way better to have a little extra resolution that you can cut away than wishing that you had maybe taken one extra photo to the right. For example, this is our finished panorama that we're discussing today. This is already cropped and edited, but if you look at the original shot with all of my photos stitched, you see that there's a significant amount of extra photo there that didn't make the final cut. As you can see, the process of stitching multiple images into a single flat projection causes the edges of the photo to appear rounded. Simply shoot more of the scene than you'll end up using, and the cropping process won't feel like you're sacrificing important subject matter. It's also important to shoot with a significant amount of overlap between frames. Lightroom's going to be picking out all of the pixels that match up, but there is a little bit of curve at the edge of every photo. This is just the nature of a cylindrical lens projecting a round image onto a square sensor. There is a little bit of natural distortion to every single image, no matter how good your lens is, and Lightroom will compensate for that. But if you don't give it enough overlap to figure everything out and stitch it, you're gonna find yourself with some weird banding and color distortions in the middle of your frame. So let's take a look at the 16 images I used. You'll notice that each frame overlaps with the photo before it by about 40% and the photo after it by about 40% as well, meaning that only a very small portion of each frame is unique imagery. So looking at each of these frames overlaid onto the final panorama, take a look at the tall, pointy peak towards the left third of the frame. You'll notice here on my second frame, it's towards the edge of the photo. On the next one, it's dead centered. And on the fourth shot, I find it on the left side of the frame. So that peak has been captured in three separate exposures on each side of the frame and in the center. This gives enough information to Lightroom that its stitching algorithm is able to pick out the sharpest, most in-focus parts of the frame, as well as accommodate distortion, vignetting, etc., things that are found in your lens. Once you've got all your photos, it's time to move on to the fun part. Import them into Adobe Lightroom, and then select all of the photos that you're going to need. I click on the first one, and then shift-click on the last. It's just that easy. Next, you right-click and navigate down the menu to where it says Photo Merge. Click on the panorama button. 
and there'll be a few second delay as Lightroom generates a rough preview. Once a preview renders, you'll need to choose a projection method. And while that terminology seems daunting at first, the differences are actually fairly minor, and both the spherical and cylindrical projections will make a great panorama in the vast majority of cases. As the name implies, the spherical projection arranges your images as though they were mapped to the inside of a sphere. This works best for multi-row panoramas. I have had great success using spherical projection for single layer panoramas like we're doing here, as it still results in very low distortion assembly. Again, as the name implies for cylindrical projection, this maps the images out as though they're arranged on the inside of a cylinder. This does tend to stretch the top and bottom edges of the photo a bit more, but still creates a realistic panorama. I have found myself preferring this for certain landscape scenes, as that stretching on the tops and bottoms does actually make the mountains look taller and more impressive. Play around with it and see what you think. Your mileage may vary. Perspective projection is best for vertical panoramas. Uh, for horizontal panoramas, it will dramatically stretch and distort the edges of the frame. And for this particular example, the scene is so wide that this wasn't even op an option. Lightroom gives me an error when I try to stitch them together using this. Once you've made your projection selections, projection, projection selection, selection, projection selection, simply click merge. Lightroom will then stitch the photos into a seamless panorama, which you can then edit as you normally would. The best part is that once the stitching is complete, this is still a raw file, so you can edit it exactly the same way you always would. In Lightroom, you can export to Photoshop if you're more familiar with Camera Raw. You can use Capture One, you can use Luminar, there's really no limitations here, which is fantastic. And so now that everything is stitched together and edited, I have a finished photo that's nearly 110 megapixels in resolution. You can see it's 13,198 pixels by 8,301. Rather than trying to jam everything into a single photo and making compromises on my composition, I spent an extra three minutes in the field and three more minutes at home in Lightroom to create a photo I'm truly happy with. And the best part is it has enough resolution that I can surprise my friend with a 40 foot wide print for his birthday. And there you have it. That's all it takes to take a couple different photos out in the field and stitch them into a panorama in Lightroom. Thank you all so much again for watching. I really appreciate you being here. Hopefully you learned something. If you did like what you see, please click the like button, the subscribe button, tell your friends, share it on Facebook, tweet it out, put it on your Instagram story, put a bumper sticker on your car, tattoo my name on your face. I'd love to see you all back here again. Thank you so much. I got it.